Hello everyone. Uh, let's uh, move forward in the earth magnetism or geomagnetism. Uh, two important aspects over here in this slide. We are going to find this dip circle and apparent dip. So these two terms we need to know what they are. So a uh, dip circle is basically this instrument. So whatever this instrument is shown to you, that's called dip circle. What is the purpose of this instrument is? The purpose of this instrument is to measure the dip and the dip that is inclination uh, you have understood in geomagnetism so let's say this is the horizontal direction and this is the actual magnetic field and this is the vertical direction or vertical component and if you remember this used to be the point p that we have considered earlier so this plane on which the magnetic field lies is known as magnetic meridian so that's called magnetic meridian so whatever the resultant field mix angle with the horizontal direction this angle is called dip so this dale is called dip in order to measure this dip whatever the instrument that we use that instrument is called dip circle and this instrument is sound like this so we can say this dip circle is used to measure this measures dip at any location on the surface of earth so this is used to measure the dip value how it works let me tell you uh, this is a vertical plane you can see and you can see this nice circle on this and this is a compass needle and uh, what we are going to do we are going to uh, place this uh, vertical circle uh, in the magnetic meridian so if we place it in the magnetic meridian then you'll find uh, this horizontal line that's a reference line is going to act as a horizontal axis so that's going to be horizontal axis and this uh, magnetic field will be bending from the horizontal direction in the direction of uh, magnetic field this needle will be bending in the direction of magnetic field so we can measure this angle so you see whatever this is showing this is showing basically the angle of dip right so in order to measure dip using the dip circle what we are going to do, we are going to place this circle in the plane of magnetic meridian. And if we are able to place this circle parallel to the plane or in the plane of magnetic meridian, then whatever this uh, angle comes in from the reference direction, this reference is a horizontal direction, that angle is called dip. Now here this arrangement is shown to make this, uh, this reference line exactly horizontal and these are the screws that can be adjusted so that uh, height uh, both sides is symmetrically level and uh, horizontal remains horizontal so here this to make this horizontal is one of the challenge once we have made this as a horizontal whatever the needle is pointing that angle becomes dip angle so that's how it works now then the another com term comes what is the apparent dip so uh, if you have understood this point that i just explained it is not going to be easy for a uh, measure or, or for a student or, or for any uh, scientist to uh, place this dip circle completely in the magnetic meridian because this magnetic meridian is something that is uh, not physically visible right this is a plane this is a plane in three dimension and this is not visible right so uh, in invisible plane we are trying to place a circle so uh, it's, it's going to be uh, very challenging to uh, pl place it precisely over that so if it is not placed on that so it might be making some angle so let's say uh, the dip circle is being placed on this another plane which makes an angle alpha with the dip uh, which makes this angle alpha with the actual mer magnetic meridian so if this alpha angle is coming in and uh, the dip circle has been placed on this uh, this plane then you'll find it's not going to give them the correct value and in that case if you measure this dip that dip will not be true dip rather it's going to be known as apparent dip so can you think of how this appearance is coming the because of the challenge placing this dip circle in the plane of magnetic meridian so if it is not exactly on the plane and it's making alpha angle then this uh, then then it's going to measure apparent value of dip and we need to measure how much that apparent value is going to be 
So for that sake, I have drawn this picture. And if you look this picture carefully, then you'll find this plane is magnetic meridian. And this plane is where the dip circle has been placed. So what is going to happen? Uh, the dip circle, this is going to measure horizontal component of magnetic field as BH days. So this is going to be the actual horizontal component, but the instrument is going to measure this component. That means it will be having component of a component and that component is going to be BH dash, which is going to be B cos alpha. However, the vertical component, which is BV, that will remain same because vertical direction is common for the two. So what the difference or what the new, new newness is going to come as, you will find this BH dash will be equal to the original horizontal component of magnetic field into cos alpha. Now we need to take care of this alpha. What is this alpha? This is al alpha is the angle made by dip circle with the magnetic meridian. So let me write this here. What this alpha is, where alpha is angle made by dip circle with magnetic meridian so that means this is basically causing the apparency now we already know that uh, in this original case what this true uh, dip used to be so we know this true dip 10 del that's it del is a true dip so 10 of that dip del value is equal to uh, bv component divided by bh component that's original but what the apparent dip will be coming as so this apparent dip will be 10 del dash let's say 10 del dash so what the apparent dip, dip is going to be that's uh, angle made by the actual magnetic field with this uh, apparent horizontal direction so this angle this angle whatever this angle is that's called del dash that's called apparent dip now uh, looking at the figure it might appear to you that this del dash is del plus alpha if it is appearing to you like this that means you are not watching it properly it should not be like that because uh, this is a three dimensional so uh, the back if you consider this back plane on the plane of the screen so this another plane is coming outwards so alpha angle is another plane and del angle is in another plane and the two planes are perpendicular so uh, they are not going to be added up okay and uh, what they are going to be equal to so we will say this is going to be equal to bv which is the uh, same component divided by bh dash now if you can place the value of bh dash over here then you are going to get it as a bv divided by bh cos alpha so this alpha is going to influence the value of apparent dip now if you look at this bv upon bh this is basically 10 of the true dip so from here we got an important formula which is quite important for the examination point of view apparent dip is equal to actual dip 10 alpha divided by cos alpha so you can remember in this format or you can take this cos alpha uh, sorry there has to be 10 del 10 del that's dip divided by cos alpha you can take this cos alpha upside or you can keep it downside if you take it upside it becomes sec or uh, whatever the trigonometric rules are you can apply that in appropriate measures yes so if if in examination uh, some time it is asking find the apparent dip so we will say 10 apparent dip is equal to 10 actual dip true dip divided by cos alpha where alpha is going to be the angle made by the dip circle from the magnetic meridian so uh, alpha will be known to you alpha will be given to you original dip will be given to you apparent can be asked or any of the two will be given to you third can be asked as per the usual calculation practices okay so this is uh, an important aspect and a new terms for you so make your notes and if there's any doubt let me know next is this tangent law of perpendicular fields 
and uh, that's a simple law and very important and it's going to be used in a uh, lot more cases so let's talk about what is this tangent law of perpendicular fields so let's say uh, at any space uh, or in, in, at any place on the earth surface uh, if we take this compass needle so that's a compass needle and purpose of the compass needle is that it uh, gives the direction of north okay so let's say uh, north i'm drawing in this direction uh, but this is a 2d picture we need to careful and this is not a three dimensional picture in three dimension horizontal north direction is in the horizontal direction and uh, all other directions east west south they are all horizontal here to show as a simple form i'm uh, drawing it in the upward direction so this is north for us so we need to see that this is a north not vertically up direction and if at that location or at any location we place that compass needle then you'll find the pointer will be pointing towards this direction or north make sense and uh, suppose at that location uh, we create one more magnetic field so at that point if we create one more magnetic field which is perpendicular to the direction of north and this uh, th in the direction of north in absence of any other magnetic field this is bh that means horizontal component of magnetic field of earth and this is the magnetic field which is always uh, everywhere all right so uh, if there is no other magnetic field the compass needle pointer will be pointing in towards north direction then after if at any location or at the same location we create another magnetic field b which is perpendicular to the direction of north so that can be any direction which is perpendicular to the north in the horizontal so uh, how we can create that there are so many options like we can have a current carrying loop and if we have a current carrying loop like this so on this axis or at the center you will find the magnetic field will be coming like this so by any current carrying element we can create external magnetic field uh, at that location so at that location effectively two magnetic field will become which are perpendicular to each other one is coming because of the earth magnetic field another is coming because of the current carrying uh, arrangement that you provided and if we place that uh, compass needle pointer or the center at that point where we have uh, uh, calculating this b then you will find pointer will be reading the net magnetic field at that point so at this point the net magnetic field will be resultant of first and second or this b h and v so that resultant will be pointing somewhere there so where the direction of resultant magnetic field is you will find pointer will always point towards the net magnetic field or the resultant magnetic field so that will be the direction of pointer now you see the pointer has turned from particular position to another position what per, uh, what uh, now we are going to do we can say this is our reference and in this compass needle there is a marking so by using that marking we can easily measure how much this theta is that means angle of deviation that means by what angle this pointer has turned up very here we can mark this marking like 15 degree 30 degree 40 degree or whatever so from there we can read uh, by what angle it has get it uh, with, uh, which this has deviated from so if we can measure this so this theta is going to be basically this angle so by this practical uh, arrangements we can find what the theta is at any location and let's say bh we are able to calculate so for us bh is given to us generally this value is known to uh, for all laboratories locations and theta is uh, uh, something we are able to calculate by using this campus needle simple instrument and using these uh, theta and bh we can think about what this uh, resultant magnetic field is going to be what is this uh, magnetic field of uh, or due to unknown current carrying arrangement is going to be Making sense. So this particular arrangement is called tang uh, here we are using this tangent law so it will become tangent law of perpendicular fields because we have created the perpendicular fields. So let's use the tangent law that means tan of theta and using the vector's law we know this tan theta is going to be the component which is far divided by component from where it's making angle bh. So from here we are getting this b the magnetic field which is perpendicular to the uh, north is going to be equal to earth magnetic field into tan theta so that becomes the law which has been stated over here so it's called tangent law of perpendicular magnetic fields so there are two magnetic fields which are perpendicular to each other and we are using tangent law hence hence this is the name 
Fine, so uh, this is going to be very useful for us as well. Let's say uh, if you want to draw uh, or d design a galvanometer working on magnetic principles, we can do so. So let's say uh, we have a current, uh, this magnetic field is produced by a current carrying circular coil. So if by using a current carrying circular coil, we are creating that magnetic field and this point is center of that coil, maybe some sort of this it is placed. Right, so we can find out what the current is going to run on this coil. So this unknown current can be calculated if the radius is given to us. So let me write over here, if B is due to circular ring or let me write directly due to ring at its center then we can write what the B is going to be so there's a formula for B B is basically mu naught n into I or simply we can write I if there's only one turn divided by twice A A for radius N for number of turns so let's say number of turns are N I is the current in each turn mu naught is a constant you know that's a magnetic field and by repeating this experiment that we did, we can calculate the B value by using the tangent law of magnetic field. So using that law, we will be finding that B is equal to BH tan theta. So we can compare the two. So from here, we are going to get this mu naught and I divided by twice A is equal to BH tan theta. So you can see clearly from here we are able to find the current in the coil. So current is going to be equal to BH tan theta. These are the components coming because of a, a magnetic field because of earth and we are going to multiply it twice A and we are going to divide the entire stuff by mu naught into N. N is the number of tons. So if you look at the right hand side a we can measure that's the radius of ring and number of turns in the loop we can easily measure in laboratory mu naught is given to us bh will be known to us theta we are able to calculate by using this campus needle by looking at all these can we say the current can be measured using the magnetic principles so we can say if we design this kind of instrument we can call it as a magneto galvanometer that means this is a galvanometer working on magnetic principles so that can be no, known as magneto galvanometer. Next instrument is deflection magnetometer. So this deflection magnetometer is used for calculation of M by BH. So basically this is a device uh, functioning on magnetic principles and it is used to calculate or to find out the value of M divided by bh at any location on the earth surface where m is basically magnetic moment of a bar magnet since bh is known to us so we can say this is basically used to find the m bar magnets magnetic moment and if you remember for any bar magnet it was very challenging to find the m value once we find this m value we can calculate its magnetic field we can calculate torque force energy all those stuffs so this instrument will help us to calculate the uh, magnetic moment or dipole moment of a bar magnet. And uh, all, all we can say is, is going to calculate this M by BH value uh, using the principles of uh, uh, this tangent law of perpendicular fields. So uh, how it's going to operate? There are two pictures and the two are different. First is called a tan A position. So this first one is called tan A position. So either we can use this tan A position to find this answer or we can use the second one which is known as tan B position. In both of them we are going to use the law of perpendicular field or tangent law of perpendicular field that we have just gone through. So uh, how it functions, let me uh, explain in short. What do you need to remember? It measures this value based on the tangent law of perpendicular fields. So let's talk about this tan A position. So what is in this tan A position? Let me explain and let me tell you how it 
function. So this is basically compass needle you can see over here and this is some arrangement maybe of wooden or something or basically this is skill and we are going to use this skill as well as this compass needle combination. Here this is a bar magnet placed over here. So that's a bar magnet. Here we are using uh, this is the length of the bar magnet which we can say L or 2L depending upon our choice. And there is a bar magnet which has been placed uh, in such a way so it's uh, along this line and uh, that's north is shown over here south is shown over here moreover the idea is that this line of this bar magnet passes through the center of this compass needle so that this becomes the uh, axial position and this is the location from where we are going to measure the distance so, so from bar magnet if we are at a distance d we will be reaching at the center point and this will become the magnetic field along the axis of a bar magnet that means theta will be zero and if we, th if we make this theta is zero we know what is the magnetic field because of a bar magnet if it has a let's say m value capital M then there's a formula if we place theta zero then you'll find only radial component will be there that means there will be only this field existing so the field because of this bar magnet is going to be in the radial direction that means the direction along this this so that's going to be B now we have oriented this uh, uh, arrangement or this position we have made in such a way that this was uh, north direction so the BH is already going to be there so that's a north direction BH and this is the new field that we have created because of this bar magnet now you can see there is going to be two perpendicular fields acting at the point where this needle is uh, fixed to rotate Makes sense. Now what this campus needle is going to point or where it's going to be pointing to, it will be pointing towards the resultant magnetic field. So this is going to be the direction of resultant magnetic field, BR. And we can measure this angle theta. So theta can be easily measured from the uh, this dial or you can say from this uh, campus needle, deviation angle theta. So here the perpendicular law of magnetic field can be applied or tangent law of perpendicular fields can be applied. So it becomes um, B is equal to BH tan theta. So tan theta can be measured from this arrangement and B is because of that bar magnet. And we can say what is the B is going to be on its axial position. It's going to be cos term that means radial term and it's going to be twice mu naught upon 4 pi into m into cos 0 which becomes 1 divided by d the distance cube r cube that's a distance cube so that's a b now we can equate these two equations once we equate these two equations then we will be able to find our desired expression so it becomes uh, twice and this uh, constant which is mu naught upon 4 pi into m divided by d cube this came out to be bh tan theta bh tan theta now from here we can find that expression which is m by bh this is m we can take this bh downside so m by bh will turn up as there are going to be a lot more constants like uh, 4 pi 4 pi divided by twice mu naught or we can cancel this two uh, choices ours into what else we are going to get is a tan theta into d cube so this expression becomes uh, important for us because based on this questions can be asked so uh, what what type of questions can be asked we are going to talk about so you just think that this m by bh can be calculated because this is a constant we can find we know what the value of this is and tan theta which we are able to measure d d we can be measuring by a scale on this uh, uh, scale that is shown over here so d can be measured theta can be measured this is a constant hence this can be calculated at any location Hence, m by bh will be known to us. Now, what type of questions can be asked? Question will be based on uh, d. That means we are placing this uh, bar magnet uh, once here, another time maybe here. So we are changing basically d. And when we change d, theta will be changing. And if we are using the same bar, bar magnet, that means neither m changing nor bh changing. Now, we need to keep in mind this m will be changing because of the bar magnet. So until unless you change your bar magnet, m won't change. BH is location dependence. So if you are doing this experiment at a particular location, so BH will remain the same. 
uh, at a different location on earth surface bh will have a different value but at one location it will have the same value so bh is basically constant for a given laboratory on the earth surface so uh, now if you place another biomagnet over here then you can say these two terms will remain the constant hence you can compare tan theta 1 d 1 cube is equal to tan theta 2 d 2 cube similarly uh, it might be the case that uh, we keep the d constant and once we are placing m1 bar magnet another we are placing m2 bar magnet so this m will be changing correspondingly theta will be changing because d remains constant bh remains constant making sense these kind of questions have been asked in the examination and if you remember the formula then you can tackle those kind of questions just like we had the calculation for uh, this 10 a position similarly we can have a calculation for 10 b position so what the 10 b position is going to offer a diagram this is the diagram north is theirs east west south is shown to us and if there is no bar magnet so this will be a bh direction so direction of magnetic field due to earth in the direction of north so that's bh shown over here i'm just darking it and we are placing the bar magnet now in this manner if we are placing in this manner then you'll find this direction that we are uh, at where this pointer is this is going to be let's say d distance so that's a d distance which is basically r for us and we make angle this so this is going to be 90 degree and this becomes uh, perpendicular bisector so you'll find the magnetic field is going to be in the direction of theta that means this that's going to be the magnetic field because theta is 90 degrees so radial component will become zero so again you will create two magnetic fields at the point where this compass needle pointer is and then you will be finding that net magnetic field will be in this direction that's a BR resultant magnetic field this theta that you can see over here can be easily measured by it as a deflection angle and again we can make this thing this is uh, on the perpendicular bisector so what uh, the magnitude of magnetic field now is going to be because of this bar magnet it becomes mu naught upon 4 pi that's a constant into m sine 90 divided by r cube that is d cube as well as using this law of perpendicular magnetic fields or uh, tangent law of perpendicular fields so that's going to be b is equal to bh tan theta so equating the two as we did earlier we can find another relation so when we equate we will get this m by bh for this b position is going to be equal to 4 pi divided by mu naught so that's going to be constant into tan theta into d cube so you'll find in this position also we will get the similar expression the only difference is a factor of two because in first case it was a radial field that has been used in the second case it's a tangential field that has been used but still uh, they, uh, they, they appear similar just this factor of two is a difference right so this is also proportional to 10 theta and proportional to d cube so here the equation can be like you change this bar magnet by another one so m1 m2 and that can be compared with theta 1 theta 2 keeping the d same or we can change the d and keeping the bar magnet same so we can compare theta 1 and theta 2 with the d1 and d2 okay so this is deflection magnetometer which helps us to find the value of this expression Moreover, BH is generally known to us for us, uh, known to us at all locations. So from here we can calculate the property or characteristic property of a bar magnet. So bar magnets, magnetic dipole moment can be easily found out using deflection magnetometer. This is the one more device, or we can call it the last device that we are going to study in this magnetic uh, part so it's named as a vibration magnetometer it's also a device that function on electromagnetic principles and it is used to measure used to measure m into bh value so this is basically complementary of that of the uh, deflection galvanometer where we were using m by bh here we are going to measure this m into bh both together as a multiple so this measures this. It's also based on the uh, tangent law of magnetic field. So the same law it is based upon. How the arrangement is? So let me explain. This is the arrangement. So there's a ground of, like this. On this ground, uh, these two uh, 
screws are leveling screws are there so this instrument is placed so that it becomes horizontal or it remains horizontal we need to keep it horizontal and this picture has been drawn in such a way that this direction is a north direction so if this is a north then you can think of there's going to be south then east west will be perpendicular to it okay and three dimensions is going to be perpendicular to that way so that's the north direction and uh, uh, there's a bar magnet so this bar magnet has been placed inside this box and uh, the, having north pole south pole that we know and this inside this box we uh, we, we make this box so that there's no movement uh, or air disturbances so keeping this air calm inside and uh, this has been tied with a string like this so uh, we are tying with a string and uh, there's a torsional hinge that will be uh, used to uh, this rotation for purpose and uh, <coughs> when we uh, twist it so let's say, uh, let's uh, talk about the initial situation so this is a north and because of uh, gravity of uh, because of this magnetic uh, properties of earth there is going to be horizontal component of magnetic field in the direction of north and uh, this uh, bar magnet will align itself in the direction of magnetic field because of earth so it's going to be pointing in the northward direction and this will be the bar magnet's magnetic dipole moment then after if we twist this bar magnet by a certain angle theta so let's say we are twisting in the horizontal direction by angle theta so let's say this north portion which was this way we have taken it outward uh, this outward to the screen by theta angle so we are twisting or rotating by theta angle so this will be twisted like this by theta and we will keep this theta very very small then we have understood the rules earlier as well so this is the external magnetic field this is the bar magnet's dipole moment and they are going to make no angle theta so there's going to be if you have twisted in this sense by theta then you'll find restoring torque is going to act on this uh, dipole or this uh, bar magnet and this torque will be uh, try to root, uh, restore it in its original situation so that's going to be restored and we know this bar magnet is going to have a uh, this uh, SHM for smaller theta. So we can say for small theta, bar magnet will perform SHM. Bar magnet will perform. SHM. Now, when this do SHM, then uh, we can uh, use the stopwatch to measure how much time it takes to com complete one round. So that can be uh, measured. That means we can measure time period. So time period can be measured by using stopwatch. Well, so this time period has been measured. And we know uh, as per this uh, calculation that what this time period is going to be. So we can say this torque is going to be m cross b that is m b sin theta. And since it is in opposite direction so we can write minus m b sin theta. So tau is going to be minus m b theta. So it's going to be theta is proportional to theta is proportional uh, this tau is proportional to minus theta. So that's angular SHM. So angular SHM is going to be there. And then we know what the time period becomes. So formula for time period becomes t is equal to 2 pi under root i by k. i is a moment of inertia by k. k is going to be m into b. When we say b, here is bh. Because it's because of earth horizontal component. So it becomes m bh. So that becomes an important formula that is used in case of calculation in vibration galvanometer so t is time period which we are able to measure by stopwatch 2 pi is something we know i is the moment of inertia of the bar magnet about this axis so we know what the moment of inertia is going to be so uh, moment of inertia can be measured from this we can calculate the value of m into bh together so if we are interested to find this m bh so how this m into bh can be expressed can we say it's going to be expressed as uh, you just you need to square so it's going to be 4 pi square into i which is moment of inertia divided by t square 
So this is how you can calculate M into BH out of this. So either you use this formula or you use this formula, both are going to be same. Uh, yes, what we need to take care of, what is this moment of inertia? So I is a moment of inertia is going to be the mass of the bar magnet into sides square, so A square plus B square divided by 12. So A will be uh, using this length, this will be A length and uh, you will be measuring uh, sidewise length as B length. So A and B you can measure it and you can find this moment of inertia. So this is moment of inertia this can be calculated by measuring mass and dimensions and uh, hence we can calculate this value of MBH. Now if we combine the two together that means the one that we uh, talked about in uh, deflection magnetometer and the one we talked about in Galvan, uh, this vibration magnetometer. So one was able to give us M by BH. Another is able to give us M into BH. So this is known to us, M into BH. This is also known to us. Now we got two uh, equations and there are two unknowns. That means using these two, we can find both the characteristic property of bar magnet as well as this horizontal component of magnetic field. Right. So these two instruments can help us to find out the Earth's magnetic field at any location on the surface as well as the bar magnet's magnetic dipole moment. So they are extremely important, particularly this vibration galvanometer. It has been uh, uh, used in examination several times. So uh, in this video, we have talked about uh, some important uh, magnetic instruments and uh, all are very, very important. So. Uh, you just make your note proper and let me know if there is an issue. Well, that's all. Thank you for watching. Have a great time.